Did you know that The Last of Us was inspired by an event that actually happened in the past? On August 15, 1951, dozens of people fell terribly ill in the town of Pont Saint-Esprit in the south of France. Hundreds more joined them in the days that followed. People were nauseous, sweating profusely, and smelling like dead rats. Dozens of people began to have nightmarish hallucinations. The town fell into turmoil. A little girl screamed that she was being chased by men-eating tigers. A woman cried, claiming that her children had been turned into sausages. A big man was fighting monsters by smashing his furniture. A husband and wife were chasing each other with knives. Even the animals went crazy. A dog was chewing stones until it broke its teeth. Ducks started walking like penguins. Everywhere, people saw imaginary houses and ran around wildly. A man jumped out the window claiming that red snakes had eaten his brain. Another broke his legs by jumping out the window and started running with broken legs. A postal worker complained that he was shrinking. A man said he was chased by donkey-eared bandits. Healthy men and women ripped their sheets and hid under their blankets to get rid of hallucinations. The asylums were filled with people strapped to straitjackets and tied to beds. There was a little apocalypse going on in the town in general. Shortly after the event in September 1951, Dr. Goodbye and colleagues published an article examining this phenomenon in the British Medical Journal. The article mentioned ergot fungus as the cause of the poisoning epidemic. There was one thing in common that united all of the victims. They had all eaten bread from Roche Bryant's bakery, which was accused of using flour made from contaminated rye. It was understood that the animals that perished also ate this bread. The report claimed that the flour used in bread contains the ergot fungus, which produces alkaloids structurally similar to the hallucinogenic drug LSD. In The Last of Us, as in the 1951 Pont Saint-Esprit mass poisoning, a fungus is responsible for all that is going on. The fungus that controls the mind and bodies of the people in the series is cordyceps. The cordyceps fungus that controls humans in The Last of Us is transmitted through food, like the ergot fungus. Early on in season 1, Ellie asks Joel how the infection began. If you have to get bitten to be infected, then who bit the first person? Ellie asks. Joel tells her that no one knows for sure. It's likely that cordyceps mutated into some staple food, like flour or sugar. According to Joel, there were certain brands of bread corn and pancake mix that were sold all over the country and the world and they caused the infection. When we look carefully at the series first episode, we see that Joel and Sarah narrowly escaped being infected with cordyceps fungus a few times. When they left the house that day, their neighbors offered them biscuits, but they did not eat them. Later in the episode, the old woman who ate the biscuit became infected. Sarah went to bake cookies at her neighbors after school, but was reluctant to bake cookies after learning that her neighbors made raisin cookies instead of chocolate chip cookies. Finally, when Joel got home from work, he forgot to bring the cake he had promised and disappointed Sarah. This is probably why Joel and Sarah are not affected by cordyceps. Broadly speaking, it is clear that The Last of Us was inspired by the 1951 Pont Saint-Esprit mass poisoning. But cordyceps fungus is a more dangerous fungus than ergot fungus. The fungus was popularized in 2006 by the show Planet Earth. As seen in Planet Earth, Cordyceps plays a very dirty trick on the ant's bodies. When the fungus infects an ant, it kills its neurons and takes over its control panel without actually piercing the ant's brain. Cordyceps strips the insect's body of nutrients and carries the ant to a high plant stern with ideal temperature and humidity conditions. There, it paralyzes the ant's jaw and freezes the ant. This allows the fungus to spread throughout the ant's body bursts from its head and develops pores that then spread to the rest of the ant colony. The fungus is believed to separate the ant's limbs from its brain and release chemicals that force the muscles to contract. If this claim is true, then it means that the ant ends its life as a prisoner in its own body. In other words, its brain is still in the driver's seat, but the steering wheel is in the mushroom's hands. Cordyceps fungus normally only affects ants. It does not infect humans. 
In the opening scene of the series, Dr. Newman acknowledges this situation. He says fungi will not survive if the internal temperature of their host is above 94 degrees. But also he claims that climate change could lead to the higher evolution of fungi. This claim is not unreasonable. While there is no evidence, there is a possibility that global warming will increase a fungus's thermal tolerance. This hypothesis may be coming true rather slowly, but it is possible. So should we really be afraid of fungi? While we don't see fungi as a big problem, in fact, 1.3 million people die each year from fungal diseases. Most fungal infections are skin infections. Or for example, in an immunocompromised patient, some normally benign spores may settle in the lungs and cause a problem. But despite this, most fungi are not harmful to us. They are either benign or simply do not know how to deal with our bodies. Every breath we take contains these harmless fungal spores because most fungi don't feel happy with our body temperatures, for now. Most prefer lower temperatures. Even if that situation changes as a result of global warming, the jump of cordyceps from ants to humans probably requires too many other conditions to be met. And these conditions are highly unlikely. However, we can never be completely sure of this. Theoretically, there's always a risk.